What do you think about Bitcoin? What do you think it is a response to? What are the growing problems of the fiat system? What is this moment in human history that is full of challenges that Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is trying to overcome? I don't think Bitcoin was devised by Satoshi, whoever he was, for fear of a breakdown of the fiat currencies. If it was, it was a very far-sighted enterprise because certainly in 2008, when the first Bitcoin paper appeared, it wasn't very likely that a wave of inflation was coming. If anything, there was more reason to fear deflation at that point. I think it would be more accurate to say that with the advent of the internet, there was a need for a means of payment native to the internet. Typing your credit card number into a random website is not the way to pay for things on the internet. And I'd rather think of Bitcoin as the first iteration, the first attempt to solve the problem of how do we pay for things in what we must learn to call the metaverse, but let's just call it the internet for old time's sake. And ever since that initial uh, innovation, the realization that you could use computing power and cryptography to create peer-to-peer -peer payments without third-party verification, a revolution has been gathering momentum that poses a very profound threat to the existing legacy system of banks and, and fiat currencies. Most money in the world today is made by banks, not central banks, banks. That's what most money is. It's entries in bank accounts. And what Bitcoin represents is an alternative mode of payment that really ought to render the banks obsolete. I think this financial revolution has got past the point at which it can be killed. It was vulnerable in the early years, but it now has sufficient adoption and has generated sufficient additional layers. I mean, Ethereum was in many ways the more important innovation because you can build a whole system of, of payments and ultimately smart contracts on top of Ether. I think we've now reached the point that it's pretty hard to imagine it all being killed. And it's just survived an amazing thing, which was the Chinese shutting down mining and shutting down everything. And still here we are. Uh, in fact, crypto's thriving. What we don't know is how much damage ill-judged regulatory interventions are going to do to this financial revolution. Left to its own devices, I think decentralized finance provides the native monetary and financial system for the internet. And the more time we spend in the metaverse, the more use we will make of it. The next things that will happen, I think, will be that uh, tokens in game spaces like Roblox will become fungible. As my nine-year-old spends a lot more time playing on computer games than I ever did, I can see that entertainment is becoming a game-driven phenomenon. And in the game space, you need skins for your avatar. The economics of the internet, it's evolving very fast. And in parallel, you can see this payments revolution happening. I think that all that all goes naturally very well and generates an enormous amount of wealth in the process. The, the problem is there are people in Washington with an overwhelming urge to intervene and, and disrupt this evolutionary uh, process. Partly, I think, out of a muddled sense that there must be a lot of nefarious things going on if we don't step in, many more will go on. This, I think, greatly exaggerates how much criminal activity is, in fact, going on in the space. But there's also the vested interests at work. It was odd to me, maybe not odd, perhaps it wasn't surprising, that the Bank for International Settlements earlier this year published a report, uh, one chapter of which said, this must all go, must all stop. It's all got to be shut down, and it's got to be replaced by central bank digital currency. Okay. And Martin Wolf in the Financial Times read this and said, I agree with this. And one suddenly realized that the, the banks are clever. They had they'd achieved the intellectual counterattack uh, with uh, almost no fingerprints on the weapon. I think central bank digital currency is a terrible idea. I can't imagine why we would want to copy a Chinese model that essentially takes all transactions and puts them directly under the surveillance of a central government institution. But that suddenly is a serious counter-proposal. 
So on the one side, we have a relatively decentralized, technologically innovative, internet-native system of payments that has the possibility to evolve to produce a full set of, of smart contracts, reducing enormously the transaction costs that we currently encounter in the financial world because it gets rid of all those middlemen who take their cut every time you take out a mortgage or whatever it is. That's one alternative. But on the other side, we have a highly centralized system in which transactions will by default be under the surveillance of the central bank. Seems like an easy choice to me, but hey, I have this thing about personal liberty. So that's where we are. I don't think that the regulators can can kill uh, Web3. I think we're supposed to call it Web3 because crypto is now an obsolescent term. They can't kill it, but they can definitely make it difficult and throw a lot of sand into the machine. And I think worst of all, they can spoil the evolutionary story by by creating a central bank digital currency that I don't think we really need. Or we certainly don't need it in the Chinese form. So do you think Bitcoin has a strong chance to take over the world? So become the primary, you mentioned the three things that make money money. That become the primary methodology by which we store wealth, we exchange? No. No, I think what Bitcoin is, this was a phrase that I, I got from my friend Matt McLennan, First Eagle, an option on digital gold. So it's the gold of the system, but currently it behaves like an option. That's why it's quite volatile. Because we don't really know if this brave new world of crypto is going to work. But if it does work, then Bitcoin is the gold because of the finite supply. What role we need gold to play in the metaverse isn't quite clear. <laughs> I love that you're using the term metaverse. This is great. <laughs> well, I, I I just like the metaversity as a kind of yeah. uh, as the antithesis of what we're trying to do in in Austin. But uh, <laughs> I love it. But can you imagine I'm using it sarcastically? I come from Glasgow, where all novel words have to be used sarcastically. So the metaverse sarcastic but see the, the beauty about humor and sarcasm is that the joke becomes reality i mean it's like using the word big bang to describe the origins of the universe it becomes like <laughs> it will after a while it's in the textbooks yeah and nobody's laughing yeah yep. well that's exactly right humor so sticky yeah um i'm on the side of humor but it is a it is a dangerous activity these days anyway i think bitcoin is is the option of digital gold the the role it plays is probably not so much store of value. Right now, it's just nicely not very correlated asset in your portfolio. When I updated the Ascent of Money, which was in 2018, 10 years after it came out, I wrote a new chapter in which I said, Bitcoin, which had just sold off after its 2017 bubble, will rise again through adoption. Because if every millionaire in the world has 0.2% of his or her wealth in Bitcoin, the price should be $15,000. And if it's 1%, it's $75,000. And it might not even stay at 1% because, I mean, look at its recent performance. If you, if your exposure to stocks, global stocks had been hedged with a significant uh, crypto holding, you would have aced the last few months. Uh, so I think the non-correlation property is very, very important in driving adoption. And the volatility also drives adoption if you're a sophisticated investor. Uh, so I think the adoption drives uh, uh, Bitcoin up because it's the option on digital gold, but it's also just this nicely not very correlated asset that you want to hold. In in a world where, what the hell? I mean, the bank, central bank is going to tighten. We've come through this massively disruptive episode of the pandemic. Public debt soared. Money printing soared. Uh, you could hang around with your bonds and wait for the euthanasia of the rentier. You can hang on to your tech stocks and just hope there isn't a massive correction or dot, dot, dot. Well, and, and it seems like a fairly obvious strategy to make sure that you have at least some crypto for the coming year, given what we likely have to face. I think what's really interesting is that on top of Ethereum, a more elaborate financial system is being built. Stable coins are the interesting puzzle <laughs> for me because we need off-ramps. 
ultimately, you and I have to pay taxes in US dollars. And there's no getting away from that. The IRS is going to let us hold crypto as long as we pay our taxes. And the only question in my mind is, what's the optimal off-ramp to make those taxes, make those tax payments? Probably it shouldn't be a currency invented by Facebook. Never struck me as the best solution to this problem. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's some kind of Fed coin. Uh, or maybe one of the, the existing algorithmic stable coins does the job, but we clearly need some stable off-ramp. So you don't think it's possible for the IRS within the next decade to be accepting Bitcoin as tax payments? I doubt that. Having dealt with the IRS now since when did I first come here, 2002, <laughs> it's hard to think of an institution less likely to yeah. leap into the 21st century when it comes to, to payments. No, I think, I think we'll... Will be, will be tolerated. Crypto world will be tolerated as long as we pay our taxes. That's the and it's important that we're already at that point. And then the next question becomes: Well, does Gary Gensler define everything as a security? And do we then have to go through endless regulatory contortions to satisfy the SEC? There's a whole bunch of of uncertainties that the administrative state excels at creating because you know that's just how that's how the administrative state works you'll do something new hmm i'll decide whether that's a security but don't expect me to define it for you i'll decide in an arbitrary way and then you'll owe me money so all of this is going to be very annoying and you know for people who are trying to run uh exchanges or uh innovate in the space these these regulations will be annoying but the problem with fintech is it's it's different from tech broadly defined you know, when tech got into e-commerce with Amazon, when it got into social networking with Facebook, there wasn't a huge regulatory jungle to navigate. But welcome to the world of finance, which has always been a jungle of regulation because the regulation is is there to, you know, basically entrench the incumbents. That's what it's for. So it'll be a much tougher fight than the fights we've we've seen over other aspects of the tech revolution because because the incumbents are are there and they see the the threat and in the end satoshi said it very explicitly it's peer to peer payment without third party verification and all the third parties are going wait what we're the third parties 